What's going on swim fans? Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday and in today's video I'm going to share with you how not to get disqualified in a swimming competition. Now even if you're not competing I think this video is going to be super helpful because if you're just learning the strokes having a foundation of knowing what you should be doing and what you should not be doing is truly truly important. Now in this video I'm going to talk about what disqualification actually means. I'm going to go over a few different general rules, talk about the turns, and we'll go through each of the different strokes and I'll share with you some obvious and non-obvious ways that you might get disqualified in a competition. Now being disqualified absolutely sucks. If you guys have been disqualified in a competition, let me know down below in the comments. And if you guys are new here, welcome to my swim pro. My name is Coach Ferris and here I help you take your swimming to the next level. So if you want to swim faster and smarter than ever before, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and like I said, let me know down below in the comments if I miss any DQs or if you have been disqualified in a competition. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First of all, what does DQ mean? It doesn't mean we're going to Dairy Queen. Yes, the ice cream is great. That's not what we're talking about. But DQ is just short for disqualification. And this means you go to a competition, you go to a race, and that race is now ineligible for points, for placing, for awards, and most importantly, for time. This means if you go to a competition and you swim your race, but you're disqualified, even if you have the best race of your life and you qualify for junior nationals or nationals or, or the senior Olympics or whatever competition you're trying to qualify for, that time does not count. It doesn't count towards your best time, your PB, and that can be crushing. So let's go ahead and talk about some ways that you might get disqualified and how we don't want to do those things. First things first, let's talk about the general rules. Now these will apply for pretty much all the strokes, whether it's a relay, individual event, it's all very, very important. Let's talk about the false start. Now this is one of the most simple ways, and we've seen this in swimming, in track and field, but basically you have the official, calls you up on the blocks or in the water for backstroke, take your mark, and on the beep, prior to the beep, there's some forward movement. And so if you move before that beep or you have any flinch or hesitation, it's an automatic disqualification. That's what we call a false start. Oftentimes the false start actually doesn't make you any faster. It can actually trying to anticipate the start will, will certainly hurt you. And in this case, you're gonna get disqualified. So definitely don't wanna do that. Secondly, pulling on the lane line. So if you basically grab the lane line while you're swimming and you pull yourself to try and increase your propuls propulsion, it's actually going to result in a disqualification, similarly to touching the bottom of the pool. Now, if you bounce off the bottom, that's a disqualification. If you accidentally brush your shoulder or hit the lane line or hit the bottom of the pool, especially if it's shallow and you're doing your breaststroke pull out or your dolphin kicks, you can actually hit the bottom and that's okay as long as you're not using the bottom of the pool or the lane line to increase your forward propulsion. And that's what the official is going to have to evaluate. And finally, we have the 15 meter rule. So this applies to butterfly, backstroke, and the front crawl. It does not apply to breaststroke. This means off the dive and off of every time you push off the wall, you can stay underwater in streamline, doing the dolphin kick, up until 15 meters. And if you go underwater past 15 meters and your head doesn't break the surface of the water, the back of your swim cap, you're disqualified. So these are some general rules that you want to pay attention to. Now let's talk about the turns. This is often where we're going to see some disqualifications. And I've been an official myself on the pool deck, and this is the most common place you're going to see disqualifications. Now for the first one is for butterfly and breaststroke. You'll often see a DQ for non-simultaneous touch. All that means is both of your hands are hitting the wall at the exact same time. If you approach the wall doing breaststroke or, or butterfly, and you have one hand hit before the other, that's an automatic disqualification. This applies for any butterfly distance event, any breaststroke distance event, including the individual medley. So if you're going from butterfly to backstroke or breaststroke to freestyle, you have to touch the wall with two hands. Now backstroke is a tricky one. There's a few different ways you could be disqualified in backstroke. So when you're swimming backstroke, you're obviously on your back. Recently, and recently meaning the last 20 years, you can actually rotate onto your stomach. Back in the day, you had to touch the wall on your back and you had to turn around or do a backflip or something crazy like that. Now you can actually turn onto your stomach, but you're allowed one freestyle stroke onto your stomach when you transition, and that way you can do a flip turn on your front and you can push off on your back. If you're looking at 
how to do a flip turn, whether it's freestyle or backstroke. I have a five-step guide. It's a great video. and It'll walk you through how to do a freestyle flip turn or a backstroke flip turn. And we've had hundreds of thousands of people learn how to do a flip turn from that video. I'll make sure it's linked down below in the description. And finally, for all of the strokes, you have to finish with a touch. So you have to finish either with your feet or your hands. And what this means is if you're swimming like 100 in a 25 meter pool, some part of your body has to touch the wall in freestyle. If you're doing breaststroke and butterfly, it has to be a two hand touch. So you can't cut the length short and only swim 22 meters. Or if you do a flip turn and you're just a few centimeters away from the wall, we've all been there, we've experienced that, and you completely miss the wall, that can result in disqualification because you didn't swim the full 25 meters. Now I know I covered a lot already, but we're gonna talk about the individual strokes and some of the non-obvious ways that you might get disqualified. So if you're a more advanced swimmer, make sure you stick around for that. Now if you guys are looking to take your swimming to the next level and you're looking for a personalized swim training plan, make sure you download the My Swim Pro app. We have incredible training plans, workouts, the intervals dynamically change based on how fast you swim, and you can sync to your favorite smartwatch. So if you have an Apple Watch or you have a Garmin watch, you can sync, have the workout right there on your wrist. So I definitely recommend you check it out. Free download on iPhone and Android. Now let's go ahead and talk about the different strokes. We're gonna go through each one of them one at a time. Let's start with butterfly. We're gonna go IM order. So in butterfly, your kick and your arms need to move simultaneously. So unlike freestyle where you have a flutter kick, in butterfly you have a dolphin kick. And if your feet are separated at any point during the kick, it's an automatic disqualification. Similarly, your arms. Your arms have to move together over the water. And over the water is very important because on the recovery, meaning the part where your arm is coming back to the front, your elbows have to be above the surface of the water. And it pains me to watch this as a coach, as an athlete, or as an official, to see someone swim butterfly and their arms don't get over the surface of the water. Not only is it disqualification, but it's extremely painful to watch and to experience yourself. So if you swim butterfly, your arms have to come over the water. And of course, you have to swim on your stomach. You can't swim butterfly on your side or on your back. Now let's talk about backstroke. Backstroke, we're flipping it over. Now we're on our back. And the important thing to keep in mind is when you start a backstroke race, you have to have your heels under the surface of the water. In fact, your toes cannot grip over the gutter. So depending on the pool situation you have, you actually can't have your toes grab the edge and lift your body up for the start. Instead, we have these backstroke pads that FINA introduced about five to 10 years ago. And now you can actually put your feet a little bit higher in the water, but your heels will still be underneath the surface of the water. And of course, in backstroke, you have to stay on your back the entire time, except when you're doing a backstroke turn. Let's talk about breaststroke. Now breaststroke's a little tricky because unlike the other strokes, you get to do what's called a pullout off of the wall. Now the pullout is an area where a lot of people can actually get disqualified. Here's why. The rules for doing a pullout are very simple. You push off the wall and streamline and you're allowed one full arm pull down, meaning from the streamline position all the way down, pulling your arms to where your hands pass your waist. And then you're allowed one dolphin kick at any point in that whole process. And then you're allowed one kick under the surface of the water. And then you have to bring your hands back up in front of your body and you have to begin the stroke immediately. And when I say immediately, you just can't do anything else. You can take as long as you want, but eventually you have to start the stroke and your head has to break the surface of the water. So oftentimes swimmers, will at some point during this pullout do more than one dolphin kick. That's one common area. If you do multiple strokes underwater with your kick or your arms, again, you're gonna get disqualified because you get one pull down, one kick, and one dolphin kick, and it has to be initiated with your arm pulled down. You can do the dolphin kick at any point during the pullout. During the breaststroke stroke, you have to have some part of your head break the surface of the water on every single stroke. So if you think about the breaststroke stroke, it's pull, kick, glide. And as you do that motion, your head has to break the surface at some point. Oftentimes you breathe while you're doing the arm pull. So pull, kick, glide, and you're breathing during the pull. And of course, your arms and legs must be moving simultaneously if your body is physically able to do that. And that's just like butterfly. In butterfly and breaststroke, both your arms are doing the exact same thing and both your legs are doing the exact same thing. The right side is symmetrical to the, to the left. And if you have a laser that cuts your body in half, they should both look identical. 
And when I say physically able, of course, if you're in a position where you only have one arm or one leg, obviously you're going to have only one side doing that. But if you're able-bodied, both sides should be absolutely symmetrical. Finally, let's talk about freestyle. Now, freestyle is interesting because it's called free style for a reason, meaning you can swim any of the strokes. So a 50 freestyle event, you can swim a 50 butterfly, 50 backstroke. And if you choose to swim an event that is not the front crawl, the rules of that stroke will apply when you swim it. I've done this personally myself. I've done plenty of races that are freestyle and I've done them breaststroke. Now it's courteous to tell the official that you're gonna do that. So that way they are aware and you are perfectly allowed to do this. You'll get disqualified if you change your stroke after you've already started. So for example, if you make up your own event and you start the 50 freestyle doing breaststroke and then you switch to butterfly and then you switch to front crawl, you can't do that. Whatever you start the race with, that's what you have to finish it with. And your time will only count towards the event that you signed up for. So if you sign up for a 50 freestyle and you do it breaststroke, your time is still for the 50 freestyle even though you did a 50 breaststroke. So keep that in mind if you're gonna do that. In freestyle, you have to have some part of your body above the water or before the 15 meter mark, which means you can push off underwater on the dive, you can dolphin kick to 15 meters, but then when you swim, some part of your body has to always remain on top of the water. And we'll get to that point in just a little bit. Now the final section I wanna talk about are the non-obvious ways that you can get disqualified. Now this is really important because these are things that are non-obvious. You might actually not believe that these are ways that you can get disqualified, but they're some of the most common ways that elite swimmers can actually get disqualified and not only like a national championship, but even the Olympic games and the world championships. And there's a few stories behind these as well. So let's go through these really quick. The first one is the IM order. I already talked about if you substitute a stroke for freestyle, but here's a good one. The IM order is butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle. That is the order, you can't make it up. The individual medley is different than the medley relay. So the medley relay order starts with backstroke, then breaststroke, then butterfly, and then freestyle. A little bit different, but the order is consistent and you can't change it. So if you do anything other than that, you're gonna get disqualified. Now the second bullet point is something that I've actually seen in person and you don't wanna get disqualified or expelled from a competition or your next event, and that is deliberately delaying the competition or misconduct. So for example, if you are late to the diving block or you are intentionally delaying the next heat from starting in some way or you're interfering with another swimmer, you will be disqualified. You can also get disqualified for misconduct. So you can be treating people inappropriately, you can use foul language, inappropriate gestures, anything like that, you can get disqualified and it sucks to do that because you really didn't do anything wrong in the pool, it's your actions out of the water that got you disqualified. So behave yourselves out there. <laughs> the third point is from backstroke to breaststroke in the crossover turn. So if you remember, in backstroke, you have to remain on your back. And when you transition from backstroke to breaststroke, it's as if you're finishing a backstroke event. This means you have to actually touch on your back. So oftentimes swimmers that are at an elite level will do what's called a crossover turn. When you do the crossover turn, you actually lean over towards your stomach to do the turn. However, if you cross over past 90 degrees towards your stomach before your hand hits the wall, you're gonna be disqualified because you didn't actually finish the length on your back. And this is one of the most common ways that swimmers get disqualified at an elite level in the individual medley. The fourth is the 15 meter rule, resubmersion. So you're underwater for 15 meters and then you pop up before that 15 meter mark and then boom, you have to maintain some part of your body above the water. Where this happens is in backstroke, on the finish. So if you're swimming backstroke and you're coming into the wall and then you take a big stroke and you reach back to try and touch the wall, at that point, you're not really taking any more strokes and if your entire body submerges below the surface on the finish before your hand hits the wall, you're disqualified because you are underwater outside of the 15 meter mark. And this is also one of the most common ways that elite swimmers can actually get disqualified in a backstroke race. I've seen it happen in the 50, 100, and 200. It's especially common in the 50 and the 100. Now, another tricky one is swimming the wrong stroke or the wrong relay order. So you got four guys or girls, or even a mixed relay of two guys, two girls, and they've got the relay order, but then in the competition, they actually swim in a different order than the names were listed on the actual heat sheet or the psych sheet or whatever sheet that you're going off of. And so this is actually really challenging because you could do everything right and not break any of the swimming rules, have a great time, break a world record, and you're disqualified because you swam in the wrong order. So if Sally needs to go second 
in the heat sheet, then Sally needs to swim second. And if she swims third, second, or fourth, or first, the relay is automatically disqualified and the time doesn't count for anyone, uh, which is really devastating. And that's happened at the World Championships and the Olympic Games. Now let's talk about swimsuits. Now this is something that uh, troubles a lot of people because you think, it's a swimsuit, how can I get disqualified? Now there's certain types of material and skin coverage that are actually legal and illegal. So in elite competition, uh, you can only have a swimsuit by FINA standards for a guy that is below the navel and above the knee. It also has to be water permeable. And so you can't wear a wetsuit or a, a open water suit that's designed for the lake or the ocean in the pool because that is not water permeable. And for the ladies and even the guys, I guess, the suit can't have a zipper. So you can't get that added compression of having a zipper. It's gotta be all the spandex material. And for that reason, it's very important to make sure your swimsuit is actually approved for competition. And you can do some research, maybe we'll link something down below. Now, if you guys are interested in learning more about what gets you disqualified and not disqualified, we'll link some articles and different resources for you guys to check out and further your learning. Now, like I said, if you guys have been disqualified, it sucks. So let me know down below in the comments, we'll empathize with you. If you think I missed something here on the board, I'd love to hear from you guys. And finally, if you're not in our Facebook group, make sure you join the largest swimming community in the world on Facebook, it'll be a link down below. Hope to see you guys in there, I'll interact, and I wish you guys the best and happy swimming. Peace.